more than 65 million forcibly displaced persons across the world. 17,000 of those are Palestinian refugees from Syria who have been redisplaced to Jordan. We refer to them, as you can see, as the forgotten ones because of all forcibly displaced persons, PRS have encountered some of the highest barriers in receiving humanitarian assistance. Our team, Lola, Morgan, and myself, Sandra, specifically address documentation issues for PRS by first explaining discriminatory policies and practices against Palestinians in Jordan, then covering what documents are available for refugees in the country and challenges PRS encounter in trying to obtain those documents, followed by the mechanisms currently in place to protect PRS and Palestinians writ large, and finally, our recommendations that introduce new initiatives and improve current ones to better protect and enhance the well-being of PRS in Jordan. Our report is a qualitative analysis of literary research and interviews with experts. Our literature review included policies in their original form, regional and bilateral agreements, and news sources. We then uh, interviewed in both Washington, D.C. and Amman, Jordan, government officials, non-governmental organizations, and members of the community who had observed the recent influx of Palestinian refugees from Syria to Jordan. And this is a photo of us uh, visiting the Care Community Center in Amman with one of its wonderful staff. In the beginning of the Syria crisis, Jordan did originally admit all Syrian refugees. However, then the crisis worsened, more refugees came to Jordan, and the administrative officials uh, decided to limit their entry to the country, beginning with PRS in 2012. Uh, due to some historical political issues, which if you refer to your timeline handout, the blue one, we, we go over some of those there. The non-admittance policy now does apply to all Syrian refugees as of June 2016. Officially, authorities opposed allowing PRS as uh, refugees in the country for fear of becoming politically involved in the Israeli conflict somehow, as well as citing some um, demographic and stability issues. And because Palestinians are a stateless group, officials also feared they would be unable to return PRS to Syria once the conflict there ends. One big result of the border closures is the creation of what's called the berm, which is this um, refugee camp essentially in what's this no man land area between the Syrian and Jordanian borders, where up to 85,000 refugees are forced to live in dire and worsening conditions awaiting entry into the country, and undoubtedly uh, PRS are among that group. So the term refoulement is defined in the 1951 Refugee Convention, which Jordan is not a signatory to, but they do acknowledge refoulement in a memorandum of understanding with the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. Nevertheless, there have been many deportations since the non-admittance policy was put into effect. Most of those deported were identified during workplace inspections and when people came forward to renew their documents and seek government services. Uh, some PRS actually do have Jordanian citizenship, which was granted to them in a nationality law in the 50s, and then they've been living in Syria since the 1970s. Uh, Palestinians as well, it's important to note, have had their nationality systematically revoked by the Jordanian government in recent decades. If you return to your timeline handout one more time, <laughs> uh, there's much more detail about how that situation unfolded and how people uh, got Jordanian citizenship in the first place. Because of heightened border security, there has been a decrease in uh, deportations recently, but an increase in the number of detainees. Since 2012, approximately 200 PRFs have been held at any given time in detention centers Cyber City and King Abdullah Park, which do hold both Syrian refugees and PRS. And once border restrictions are relaxed, it's thought to be that the de deportations are expected to rise again. As you can see, the Jordanian government's policies against PRS violate several international and national laws. Most of them refer to unlawful detention, refoulement, and subjection to situations considered to be torture. Now to Morgan for details regarding documentation. So obtaining documentation in Jordan for refugees is extremely critical. Obtaining the following documents that I'm about to talk about um, for Syrian refugees is already difficult, but what we would like to further underline 
is that PRS are not able to obtain any of these documents unless under special conditions such as previously acquired nationality or through family history. So this is important because lack of documentation leads to restricted access to health, education, humanitarian assistance, and restricted movement within Jordanian borders. So the first important document is called the Ministry of Interior or MOI card. This is particularly important because it serves as a confirmation of legal status for refugees and it is required to access government services such as healthcare and education. To obtain an MOI card, you need to provide the requirements listed in this slide here. Um, and those are particularly difficult to have all together at once. Um, in an effort for the government of Jordan to issue more MOI cards to Syrian refugees, they did initiate a process called the Urban Verification Exercise, or UVE. This is a process um, for Syrian refugees living outside of the camps where they could come forth without penalty with all of these requirements and be issued an MOI card. However, this exemption period excluded PRS. Behind MOI cards, there are a variety of other documents that are particularly important as well. So the first of these are work permits. Work permits are essential if you are owning a business or if you want to legally work in Jordan. However, you cannot receive a work permit without an MOI card. So that means if you weren't able to get an MOI card from the UVE process or you didn't have one to begin with and you are working in Jordan, you don't have a work permit. Um, finally, marriage and birth certificates are also extremely critical. Um, due to many informal marriages in Syria, wedding ceremonies were often documented in family books. And family books are needed to present to the government of Jordan that you are legally married. However, a lot of these family books were confiscated at the border by Jordanian authorities. And additionally, if you have a child who's born in Jordan, you're not able to register their birth if you don't have a marriage certificate. And now for the agency that helps BRS. All right, so I'm going to discuss the efforts um, UNRWA has made to protect this uh, critical population. So the United Nations Relief Works Agency is the only UN agency that's actually mandated to assist Palestine refugees. UNRWA has lacked a, a protection dimension in its mandate, and this deficiency became even more evident when the crisis in Syria broke out. This has had a direct impact on the type of protection it can offer to PRS. Palestinian refugees from Syria are not able to officially register with the government of Jordan and its Ministry of Interior, as Morgan just highlighted, but they can register with UNRWA. They receive a service card in which they are able to enroll in UNRWA schools and, help, and receive health services from the agency. But it's important to note that being registered with UNRWA does not grant PRS legal status or protection in Jordan. For this reason, UNRWA refers to its registration process as being recorded. Palestine refugees from Syria and Jordan are afforded equal access to UNRWA's pre-existing schools and health facilities, as well as their 10 camps. Um, UNRWA uses the same curriculum from Jordan's Ministry of Education and in schools, and its schools are actually known to outperform Jordanian schools. PRS that do not have Jordanian documents do not have access to government schools or public health facilities, aside from the population that Morgan and um, Sandra discussed that may have had Jordanian nationality from family history or previous um, encounters or times when they lived in um, Jordan. UNRWA has three main protection tools that it uses to assist its population, uh, the population that it services. Um, these tools are also utilized by UNRWA's five protection social workers, also known as PSWs. So PSWs are essentially case managers that seek to address issues that an individual PRS and their family may be facing. Solutions vary on a case-by-case -case basis, um, but at any time they can be using case manager tools such as exchanging of information consent forms, the development of action plans, um, external referrals to other organizations for additional services, such as psych psychosocial and legal services. Cash assistance is truly a life-saving tool for this population. Um, cash assistance is another form of protection that is offered to PRS and has been critical to their sustainability in Jordan. Um, UNRWA uses an emergency cash program as well which offers protection to families that are in need based on a protection issue, such as needing additional cash for rent or medical services 
or if they are able to seek uh, marriage and birth certificates, the fees that are used to cover that. All PRS are also eligible for UNRWA's Winterization Assistance Program. And this is essential to meeting the needs of PRS during the winter months. UNRWA uses a scale based on family size to distribute this cash. And um, this cash is usually used to cover the costs of more clothing or also to heat the homes in the winter months. It's important to note that in 2016, um, one of the organizations that we met, the, what met, met with, the Danish Refugee Council, um, they offered excess funds to UNRWA in order to provide them with further assistance so they could truly meet the needs of all PRS that were in need of winterization assistance. UNRWA continues to adapt internally and appeal to the international community for the protection of Palestinian refugees from Syria. With the creation of an emergency, emergency team as well as a newfound focus on protection, as well as various life-saving tools, UNRWA has attempted to uh, address the dire needs of this population. Despite their efforts, there are still a number of constraints, and there's a need for change to truly enhance the protection of Palestinian refugees from Syria and Jordan. So our critical analysis is that instead of alleviating Jordan from refugee-related burdens, the government's policies towards PRS have only worsened the situation. So deportations and the denial of entry at the border have often resulted in uh, this population going back to Syria to face unknown dangers and the likelihood of death. In addition, the documentation policies have also led to PRS hiding currently within Jordanian borders, often unable to seek assistance due to lack of documentation. Um, the following recommendations that we have are several ways in which we believe that PRS could be integrated better into mainstream policy. So the first recommendation is to incorporate PRS into regional dialogue and response plans. In our larger report, we highlight that although there are a lot of different response plans and regional dialogues surrounding the Syrian crisis, we believe that PRS needs to be specifically highlighted in all of these response plans as a population that needs specific assistance. In addition to financially empower UNRWA, we are asking um, as a recommendation for the commitment by the international community to provide for the $411 million that was requested by UNRWA in their own 2017 Syrian Regional Crisis Response Emergency Appeal. If this commitment was made, um, it would be easier for UNRWA to increase their advocacy and better advocate for PRS on a monumental scale. Our second recommendation is related to UNRWA's, or to Jordan's national policies, and it's a way in which, by changing these national policies, they'd be able to enhance the protection needs of PRS. So the main barrier of protection for Palestinian refugees from Syria and Jordan is the fact that they're not registered with the Jordanian government. To put it quite simply, they are essentially undocumented, and they are therefore without legal status. While PRS face a number of anomalies in documentation, their access to protection would be significantly enhanced if they were able to receive MOI cards that allow them to be identified by the Jordanian government. The MOI cards provided to Palestinian refugees from Syria could come with some limitations. For example, the provision of services and protection for PRS could remain with UNRWA and non-governmental organizations in accordance with the status quo. Since the MOI card is required for refugees to apply for work permits, we would hope that they would have access to this right as well. The government has not granted our PRS the right to work legally in Jordan, and this has left most PRS without any income and furthers their insecurity and vulnerability. We would also like to see PRS included in the exemption periods for marriage and birth registration. Um, while an MOI card is not required to register a marriage or a birth, PRS have not been able to avail themselves to these processes because they're not even allowed to be in Jordan. <laughs> so they obviously fear deportation and that they would be identified by the government and therefore sent back to Syria. The government of Jordan could guarantee that PRS could register with register their marriages and childbirths without being put at risk of deportation, and this would be a fair compromise for the Jordanian government, who seeks to avoid regularizing the status of PRS in Jordan, but would also um, save a number of children from being without civil documentation. <clears throat> So during our research, we um, found that oftentimes refugees residing in Jordan do not know 
uh, their legal rights um, living in the country. So we, our first recommendation is to implement a robust advocacy campaign for PRS. And uh, given the successes of the Know Your Rights campaign developed by the American Civil Liberties Union, we think that a similar platform could be restructured to fit the cultural context of Jordan. Um, so although this is not a catch-all situation, um, we do realize um, that it would have to be um, mainstreamed in a way that would be sort of an advocacy tool only, um, and we believe that this would be a great start um, for them to go ahead and seek legal assistance. Um, so we do recognize the weakening capacity of UNRWA, so we are therefore recommending that UNRWA's top government donors, such as the US, Germany, and Norway, spearhead this campaign with ARDD and JCLA, which are two legal nonprofits in Jordan. As Lola mentioned previously, there are only five protection, protection social workers responsible for case management in Jordan. So a larger, appropriately dispersed staff would be able to better protect PRS from situations like accelerated deportations and other issues related to their legal status that really require consistent updates and review. Given UNRWA's budget constraints, we do understand that expansion will require a new funding scheme or mechanism. Uh, currently, UNRWA does accept members of the UN's Junior Professional Officer Program, which is where individual countries sponsor their own citizens to fill roles across UN agencies that address humanitarian needs. However, the positions don't currently include protection of social workers in Jordan. So our recommendation is that uh, UNRWA and its donors really advocate for the addition of PSW to the JPO program, which will not only alleviate funding issues for UNRWA, but will also help to better serve PRS and all Palestinians through uh, the country. In addition, UNRWA has created partnerships in the past, again, as Lola mentioned with the Danish Refugee Council, but only for um, funding assistance. So we think that UNRWA should create more agreements with NGOs in Jordan that are both willing and able to provide not only funding assistance, but also direct assistance for program implementation with their staff members, um, while continuing to willingly navigate the political considerations that come with serving Palestinian populations. UNRWA and its key allies and donors should also continue to work within their diplomatic abilities to advocate that Jordan adhere to international law and uh, stop the practice of deporting PRS to Syria, as well as to repeal the non-admittance policy for PRS and other Syrian refugees. NGOs who sign agreements with UNRWA could promote these goals from within Jordan uh, by contacting government officials themselves, as well as utilizing their own publications and social media to really uh, further disperse commentary and more information about the issues. Additionally, advocacy groups like Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International have already spoken out against Jordan's practices, and their continued engagement will be vital to making sure these issues stay on the international agenda. The last point of our recommendation has to do one that is definitely politically sensitive, um, and that would be the relocation of PRS to third uh, countries. So through our research, we discovered that there was a specific caseload of PRS that who were being detained in Cyber City that were able to receive assistance from third countries and were relocated to those countries. These refugees were able to find durable solutions, and this happened on a case-by-case -case basis. So while this resettlement of refugees remains highly sensitive, Palestinian refugees specifically, remind, remains highly sensitive um, because of the political situation as well as the right of return, the resettlement of PRS to countries that are willing to receive them um, and able to guarantee their protection is a noteworthy solution. Considering the fact that UNRWA categorizes 87% of the nearly 17,000 PRS that they serve as vulnerable or extremely vulnerable, the relocation of PRS to a third country should not be seen as a political act, but rather a life-saving protection tool. Willing countries, including the United States, um, they should partner with UNRWA, identify the most critical and vulnerable cases, and allow them to be resettled to their countries. So in conclusion, overall, there is a need for change in public opinion, as well as attitude towards refugees in Jordan, and arguably all over the world. Um, Jordan has been a country of refuge for waves of refugees, especially Palestinians. For PRS specifically, historical tensions from Black September, which is on your timeline, um, and five years of non-admittance have added to their isolation, 
within Jordan society. While Jordan has nobly balanced the needs of its own people with those of burgeoning refugee populations, greater efforts should be made to accept and recognize the human rights of all refugees, including Palestinian refugees from Syria. Our research focuses on a very specific population in one country, but there are a number of refu refugee populations facing protracted situations all over the world. Generations of their family have been marginalized and continue to lack basic human rights. It is important to shed light on these vulnerable populations and look for creative solutions to assist them and empower them. Our research is an attempt to do that for PRS in Jordan. Thank you.